I'm not gonna tell you what they are yet. What's happening? She is due June 7th. Hey y'all, Amy here, welcome back to the farm. So this morning I am gonna be doing a quick inspection of a split in a hive that I did two weeks ago. So here's what happened. First of all, I'm gonna get ready while talking to y'all. Okay, first of all, if you wanna see me actually doing the split and the inspection, y'all, it was insane. The bees were so bad. There was bokus of bees and I got stung and it was just a mess. I had a stinger stuck in my chin. Y'all, through my veil. Got stung through the veil. It didn't get in there. It just was banging so hard that it pushed the veil and just got me right there. Anyway, um, if you want to see why I did the walkway split and what all happened and what it looked like then, I will put the little card either like here or right there or wherever. It's going to be one of those two sides. Um, but I'll put it there and you can watch it if you want to. Now, what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to check on it. It's been two weeks. I had said in the other previous video that because it was a walkway split, I wasn't going to check it for a month to give them a chance to uh, do the queen raise and ha if they needed to so I didn't disrupt any cycles of anything. But y'all, we have a problem. So the hive had been doing good, the activity at the door had looked normal, and then two days ago it was a lot, lot less. Y'all hear that? Do y'all remember those clocks? A lot of them had birds. On every hour, it would make the different sound of a different bird. Like this is from like, that was my childhood. Y'all, we had a bird clock. And every hour made the sound of a bird. Y'all remember those? This one's a tractor. It's the same tractor sound every time, but it's a tractor clock. And every hour, it makes the sound of an engine. Anyway. Anyway, y'all, okay, so the hive had a lot less activity and then I went up to it and looked up close and there was d dead bees at the entrance and on the ground in front of it. So, yeah, that is not ideal. So we're gonna just go take a look at what is happening. Now there is a chance that um, the dead bees, there's not a ton of dead bees, there's just some. So there's a chance that it was just the hive defending itself against some others or whatever, but, and it has been wet. It was raining, not raining when I checked on it, but it was a rainy day yesterday, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna find, but point is I'm just gonna go in and look. I'm not gonna fix anything today. If anything needs fixing, we're just gonna look today. Because I got a lot of other stuff to do. Okay, turn you around for a second. This is burlap. This is like burlap. This is a non-treated burlap that I use in my spoker. You know, this is my favorite uh, smoke to use. You have to make sure you get untreated burlap. I order it and um, actually, I'll put it in my Amazon store. Exactly what I use if you're interested. The link will be in the description. So, I'm gonna cut off a strip of this and put it in my smoker. All right, y'all, I'm gonna walk out here. I use a tack box for my stuff for carrying a few things when I come out here just to check the bees. Just a quick little inspection makes it easier to carry my little bit of stuff. Okay, and there they are right there. I'm gonna show y'all real quick what I mean by the activity at the front. One side versus the other. Also, everyone's advice and comments from the last time I did my bees. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all your input. 
one of them was to use um, nit nitrile gloves, something like that. And I have to find some that are small enough. Found some, but none of them fit my hands well because this, these are smalls of this kind of glove and I still have a lot of, you see all that space? I have very tiny hands, y'all. So I'm gonna try to find a well-fitting rubber type glove that will fit me because that's hard. And I know there's a lot of people out there who do this barehanded and I would, y'all. If you know you, my, if you know my bees, you know why I don't. A sting or two on the hand is not a big deal to me. But y'all, you're about to find out. Actually, you may not. They may do good. I don't know. We'll see. But y'all, last time, and and a lot of the times, depending on the time of year, who is crazy? All right. So this is the original hive here, and this is what it normally looks like. Let me walk you to this other side here. This is the new hive. And this is what it looks like over here. So let's go in there and see what we see. Alright. Sealed up nothing, are they? Can you see all these dead baby bees as they were hatching out? All the ones that died on this side. All the dead babies. This is the bottom of the hive here. It's just, can you, I don't think you can see. It's just full of dead bees. All in the bottom. And I think what we've got here is the bees that are going in and out are just robber bees from the other hive. Let's see, they're just here taking the honey. And that's it. So that is what we call an unsuccessful walk away split. And that's okay. That is okay. All right, y'all. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take this hive away at a distance. I'm going to let these bees continue and finish robbing out what's left of this while it's at a distance. Um, and then, and then, uh, we're going to, I'm going to have to do another split. I have to do another split. And so, cause this one, this colony is just too huge. So what I could do, take this box away, take, let me see if I can show you. What I could do to attempt another split. Now you're all crooked. What I could do here is I could take these two off and just set them on this frame and then put a lid on this one and just do like a, like a, it's a basically, it's a walk away split and you don't know which one the queen is in but you just evenly divide them. And with the amount of pollen and things blooming and everything here, I feel comfortable doing that because I have to do something because there's way too many bees. I can't just, I can't not split them or they will swarm. So 
I think that's what I'm gonna do. That way it's not gonna disrupt what they've got going on in here. I'm not gonna mix up any frames. I'm just gonna break this apart, move this one to here, and uh, call it a split. Y'all see all these dead bees here? I'm gonna look through them and uh, make sure the queen wasn't there. Cause I don't know. There was only one frame I didn't examine when I moved from here to here back when I did my split two weeks ago. So there's only one possible frame that she might've been on. I didn't think she was, but I'm gonna check these dead bees and see, and then I will clean this off and we'll just split this and put it here. back to the wood line to blow them all off of me. Well, I think I'm gonna have to run. I think I may have to run. Because y'all, this. All right, I'm gonna set you up. I'm gonna go run around on the other side of the pig pen there. Ready? All right. All right. Nope, I'm gonna take you a little bit farther away from the bees. Come on, come back and get you. So, let's see. Let's see what they do. Here we go. Ready? Ready? I'm gonna leave my stuff here. Okay, here we go. All right, brought you back. Apparently I need to run more. Back in here. Shut the door. Last time, it's hunting me down. Also, last time, I checked myself for bees and then took my suit off. Got stung in the arm. I don't see any though. I don't see any. There any on my back? Good. Okay. <clears throat> also, last time I had the stinger still tuck in my chin. <sighs> like that! What the heck? <sighs> so last time I was right in the middle and now it's right there. Okay. There it is. What is happening? Oh my word. Y'all. 
Okay. Like I said, I've been wearing this suit for three years. And never been stung on the face before. Before two weeks ago. And I got stung smack dab in the center. And now I'm stung right here. And I was just past the point of all swelling and all that. <clears throat> Last time I said, well, that's going to be just beautiful. And it absolutely was as I thought and here we are again okay so that tells me that not going not gonna not gonna do the same thing again we're gonna go with plan B next time look my chin does not stick out that far like how like they're dive bombing my my mat my uh, veil how are they they're hitting so hard that they're just like whew. you would think my nose I think my nose sticks out farther doesn't it okay so anyway, anyway so yeah that's great <laughs> that's just great fantastic because you know because you know I have plans tomorrow <sighs> oh well that's okay that's okay maybe I'll try wearing makeup I wear a little bit of makeup on my eyes. I don't wear it on my skin or nothing because I just don't like the feeling of it on my skin and how it looks or whatever. But this is super, super red tomorrow. I'll probably just put on some makeup. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not looking at y'all because I keep looking at myself in the camera here. Matches my shirt. in there for a minute so that Bear can spend some time out here with all the goats. Supervise. I make sure he's always supervised when he's with the animals. There's Rocky. Come here babies. Hi all the babies. Hi all the babies. And there's my dope dog. Alright, one of the things I was going to tell y'all. Come here. Come here. Come here. Is Annabelle here. I'm almost positive. Just turn around. It's not that hard. I'm almost positive is pregnant because she has gone two heights, two heat cycles now, and from what I can tell, has not come back into heat. Um, Toby, please don't eat my shirt. Toby, 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 Toby. Okay. So anyway, she's not gonna stay here, but I'm pretty sure Annabelle is bred. And she was bred to William Chester from the Chicken Daddy Farm. And that is gonna be some gorgeous babies, y'all. Oh my goodness. She is due June 7th. So a little farther into summer than I would have liked, but she didn't take the first time that I took her to visit William Chester. So the second time was, the second time appears to have been successful. Hi everybody. Another thing that I was going to tell y'all about was the Annabelle likes to chew on skin. That's not what I was going to tell you about, but y'all look at her. She doesn't do it hard. She just nibbles, like likes the feeling of pulling your skin. She's so funny. Animals are funny. They're weird. They're weird creatures. Here, come here. They're all special. They're all just special. That's all. This is Batman. Batman. Likes his neck scratched. And then he just smiles. <laughs> oh, you're so handsome. You're so handsome. Okay, but y'all, what I was going to say was, all right, um, on my thumbnail, which is a picture that you see of my video, I told you, or I, I led you to believe that something new was here. That's because... And now it's gonna get windy. That's because something new is here. A couple weeks ago, I say a couple weeks ago, it may have actually been over a month ago, I told you that I was gonna be bringing two new animals onto the farm. Y'all, they're here. See that back there, that gate? They're in there. 
two animals that I have never had before. Let's not play with the camera stand. Hold on. Two new animals that I've never had before are in there. But here's the thing, y'all. I'm moving over here for a second so I can talk to you without all the critters. Here's the thing. I'm not going to tell you what they are yet. Okay? You're all crooked now. So, there's a reason for this. It's like a, it's a two-part situation. They were dropped off night before last. And then, how do I explain this? I don't want to explain it and give her a lot of stuff away. That man's coming. Um, just, just know that the animals are here and I'm going to reveal what they are in the next video. Because at the time of my next video, I'm also going to be having a special guest here. And so I'm, <laughs> which is where the two creatures came from, was brought here by my special guest. And so, oh, there's more. So y'all, you just have to be patient. Okay, the next video really, <laughs> the next video will reveal what it is. Hi. <laughs> Alright y'all, step back into the shed real quick because I forgot that I was going to give you an update on my turkey eggs here. Now, these are, I'm going to put the breed here of what kind of turkey they are. They will be going into lockdown in three days, y'all, which means that the pieces of like racking and stuff in there that turns them and things, all that is going to come out. It's going to be shut and not opened again until they have hatched. So they are due to hatch on the 29th. So that's next week, y'all. That is next week. We have turkey babies and I'm really excited. Yeah, look, it has had its first plow. This, that's a bee, that's a bee, hold on. When I do bees, y'all, they remember me for a while, for the next couple of days. If they like smell me, I guess, then they, Try to sting me. Sometimes I can run away from them, and sometimes I get stung. On me. My kids right here. Husband's over there. I don't bother them at all. So, anyway. Anyway. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this fast. Bees are way over there, but there's a bunch of clover and stuff, so they're around here. But anyway, this is one of my in-ground garden areas. This is 200 yards. There's another one on that side, 200 yards. This, my husband's family farm, used to be, oh, dadgummit. Okay, okay. I'm gonna set you here. I'm gonna hide in the barn for a minute. Okay. Get my exercise when I do the bees, y'all. I get my exercise. And yes, I know, it's a more aggressive hive than uh, I should have. And so my plan, thanks to a few comments and messages from y'all, um, is to get a new queen. I'm gonna requeen and I'm gonna, you know, try to change the genetics of my bees because that's not okay. This is not okay. Um, anyway, I was telling you about my garden space. I have two sections that are really long and that's because when this, my husband grew up on this property, it's been in his family for 
hundreds of years. But when he was growing up, this was a chicken farm for Tyson. And there was really long chicken barns. Now, when he got older, it went out of business. And then in 2010, a tornado came through and what was left of the chicken barns got knocked down. And so now those areas are plowed and used for gardening. Um, I don't use all the space. It's so much space. I don't need that much because I have raised gardens too. But in those places is where I grow. So anyway, my point is they're plowed because it's almost time to start planting. All right, y'all make sure that you are watching for the next video coming out i'm really excited about that one with my special guest and my reveal of the two animals that i have brought to the farm so until next time we'll say keep, keep on, on the, the sunny, sunny side, side.